Hello everybody. This lesson is a view in Iceland, but I suppose it could be anywhere in the world really, anywhere where there are mountains and a coast. So let's begin, shall we, with today's lesson. I prepared some colours here and we have a colour here which is a colour for the, to use for the beach. Now it's very very rare that I use white but this is white, Chinese white and it's mixed with a little tiny touch of raw sienna. If you haven't got raw sienna, perhaps you have a pale brown colour, that would do. Make your own beach colour. It's entirely up to you. It's your painting, it's your world. Make it however you wish. Now this next colour here, and we'll try it, is cerulean blue. One of my favourite colours. A cerulean blue. It's a light, palish blue. Next, cobalt blue. You need to mix that. I've also made a light green, a darker green. Now the darker green, as this one here, is made with cobalt blue and Payne's grey. We'll also need perhaps a yellow just on its own. And this will be maybe a few little flower heads here and there. I've made that a little bit stronger, less water. You can add any other colours that you wish, of course. It's your painting after all. And it should be enjoyable, it should be fun. And if we go through this step by step, then hopefully we'll get a good finished result. As per usual, we always begin with a sketch. I'm using a slightly darker pencil as I usually do. This is, is actually a 2B pencil so that it shows up for you, the viewer, to see. Let's begin with a line about here. It doesn't have to be straight. And then, suggestion of a few mountains. One. One a little bit lower, but still going to a peak. Two. Maybe a mountain here in the background. And the final distant ones. Then here, the beach curves round and off the picture. That's the first part of the beach. Then another coming round and it's getting wider and slightly wider and slightly wider. Almost looks like a pathway here. I quite like the idea that there's a walkway down to the beach. So I'm creating another curved line here and one here, getting a little bit wider towards the front and along there as, as though there were pieces of wood going down to the beach. Just place those in. That's it. That's all we really need. Let's get started. Let's begin to paint. The sky is going to be a wet on wet technique. So we'll begin by wetting the sky. That's one scoop of water and two scoops of water. That's all we need. So this is the wet on wet technique. There are only two techniques in watercolour, wet on wet and wet on dry. And there's something you may also have noticed with this slightly advanced lesson. I have taped my P 
piece of Bockingford watercolour paper onto the board. This is my paper as usual, but it is taped down this time, and that will give you in the finished result that will give you this border all the way around when you carefully peel the tape off at the end. Let's take some of the cerulean blue now and we can apply that just using the flat edge of the brush. There's no need to rush, just gently glide that along the paper. To give the effect of clouds, I'm leaving a space there. So I'm not painting white in, I'm simply leaving the suggestion of the cloud by not painting. That's looking really, really effective and how simple that was to create. I'm going to take a touch of cobalt. I don't need very much because it's a very, very strong colour. You'll know that if ever painted with me before, whether online through the YouTube channel or whether you've painted with me in an adult class or whether you've painted with me in a school class or maybe you've come to my classroom in Basho Leaves, which is near Clitheroe. You're all welcome to come. I have classes that I do for adults and I'm also doing a few for adults and children together. You have to come with an adult. Okay, let's allow some of this cerulean blue onto the mountain and a touch of cobalt. Now that's a little bit strong there, so I'm washing my brush. This is now a clean, damp brush and I can fade that in. I'm not going to paint here yet because it, the sky is too wet, it's going to run. I'll put a little bit over here. Maybe this is, there's a suggestion of some snow left on the mountains. I quite like that effect. This mountain's going to be a lot stronger. And not only is it going to have the cobalt blue in it, it's going to have some Payne's Grey. Now I've got a little bit of Payne's Grey here. So I can just wipe my brush through that. This is lamp black and ultramarine blue. And I'm going to allow it to mix with the darker blue. Now here you may be noticing I'm leaving some little white shapes. They are going to give the impression of some distant houses. Maybe there's a hotel on the edge of the lake. I'm going to put a little, a few little dots, suggest windows. It is very far away. I like the way that the pencil seems to disappear because the darker colour is creating an edge now. Just using the tip of the brush and pulling that colour down. I quite like these little tiny flecks of white that are being left. I'm not painting them, just letting them be. Why not? It's my painting. I can create it however I wish. Yeah, really liking this now and I'm enjoying it. Forget all your cares, all your troubles, just for a little while. A little bit of time to withdraw from the cares that will not withdraw from us. This mountain side here needs a little bit of blue, cobalt blue again. And then I'm going to introduce some green. 
I'm going to introduce this green here. So this was yellow, cadmium yellow, pale, with some cobalt blue. Just blend it in. And I'm making the brush direction down, sweeping down the mountainside. That is looking excellent. Maybe it comes along a little bit here. Maybe there are some trees at the base of the mountain. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to carry this on because in the original painting that I did, there are trees where these hotels and houses are. That's looking really effective. It's just the illusion of trees and the illusion of houses, that's all. Here's some darker. Just dabbing that in. So I'm dabbing this in onto the slightly damp colour. The first colour put on, which was the yellow. Wow! Yeah, that's looking really, really effective. Let's have a little bit of dark on this side. Dot, dot, dot. Just dab it in. Let it run into the colour that's already on and it's still wet. So I'm just dabbing that. Just giving illusion. The illusion of some greenery. Look at that already. This sense of distance. I think I might just put a little bit of blue now that this has dried here. I might introduce a little bit of darker blue in here, just a little bit more. Maybe even a little bit of the Payne's Grey as well. But I like the idea of there being a little bit of snow in the distance. And here I'm going to make this a little bit deeper. It's all about being as subtle as you can be with the tip of the brush. I say this over and over again, all painting is an illusion. And we're just creating the illusion of shadows and snow and ice. The brush I'm using today is a number six. It's worn off now. I've used this so often, but it's a number six brush and it goes to a fine point nylon. I'm going to take some cerulean blue now because I'm working my way down the painting and wiping across the painting straight onto the dry paper. So this is wet onto dry. I'm using the tip of the brush and I'm trying to keep it quite straight. A little bit of white allowed to show through. Maybe it's a little bit of waves in the water. Look at that. That just worked so easily. And there's no great big deal to it. I've now got my lake in. Now I need a clean brush and I can go to the beach colour that I mixed earlier, which is here. Again, straight onto the dry paper and drag the colour along and off the painting. That's two dips. That's looking really really good. I am considering when this dries I'm going to think about putting some tiny figures on the beach. If I'm brave enough, if you're brave enough you might do that in your painting. I think this might be okay now. But I do want to bring this beach colour up along this beautiful wooden walkway that leads us down onto the beach. And I like the way that the pencil lines still show a little bit.
Let's move on. Back to the lighter green again. I'm just being a little bit careful that it doesn't run too much into the sand colour. So I might leave a little gap. I'm also thinking about maybe introducing some of this stronger yellow and let that stronger yellow blend into the lighter green. It's about putting little dots and dabs and allowing the colours to slightly blend into each other. I'll come back to this part in a moment, but I think I'll work on here for a moment. Let's start with some lighter, the brighter yellow. And then let's go to the medium green that I mixed. Blend that in. Dot, dot, dot. Blend, blend, blend. But I'm not completely painting it all. I'm letting it just be almost like it's dotty. I'm dotting it in. I'm going to change my brush now. I'm going to go to a smaller size. This is a number three. These tend to be two main brushes that I use. A number six and a number three. For this A5 size piece of paper, but even I can go even bigger with these. A little bit of dark green on my brush and I'm holding the silver furrow of the brush here. I'm going to just flick that paint up. So we're getting the illusion of some beach grasses now. We'll have a little bit darker green down here. So your job is to watch very, very carefully the way that I hold the brush, the way that I apply the colour and it's important to think about how wet the colour is when you put another colour, one colour on top of the other. Just be aware of that. I can move back over now to this side or onto this corner here and I can introduce some more green. And some darker green. You just have to be a little bit brave. Don't expect your painting to be exactly the same as this painting of mine. It can't be. It has to be your own painting. Yeah. 
now that the sand has dried I can come up closer perhaps to the edge of the sand with some of this green but it wouldn't really matter if a little bit of green went in to the sand that is looking really really good in the original painting there are some little yellow flower heads but I can't really put them in yet I could perhaps put some here but they don't really show because the paints a little bit too wet but I like I can have a few grasses definitely flick 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 it's a kind of a Japanese style of painting starting from the bottom of the picture and flicking up yeah now I think also in my original I took a little bit of paints grey on my brush and there was some kind of building or little house here if this is not too wet it's just a little rooftop of a house just the suggestion of it there maybe a little house peeking out of the grasses and then I'll use this same darker colour and create some darker trees and foliage all the way along here I like this area being lighter because it's like a, a field that's um, on the edge of the mountainside. Wow, yeah, that's looking good. I might put a few more grasses on this area here, but I'm not going to do it at the moment because it's too wet. So what I'm going to do is perhaps introduce a colour called sepia. Now this is a very, very dark colour and I won't need very much of it. So let's take a small amount and we'll just, I think even that's too much believe it or not. I'll add a little bit of water with my pipette few drops of water to it because what I'm going to do is I'm going to be brave and I'm going to use what's called a dry brush technique and I'm going to wipe my brush with the wet colour over the dry section of the beach and that will give us the suggestion of maybe little bits of rocks on the beach, some shadow. Let's have a look, let's see if we can create that. So this is the colour. I've not made it too dark, that will be perfect. Now, if I turn this test piece over and show you, what I'm going to do with the brush is it's flat to the paper and I'm going to wipe the brush across like that. So there's hardly any on and I'm just going to wipe it across the beach giving a little bit of texture to the sand. Excellent, I like that. Also now are we feeling brave? Because on the beach are some tiny figures. I'm taking the tip of my small brush and wiping it to a point. Maybe there's a little tiny figure here, a dot for the head and the body. There's one figure. There are two people here together walking along the beach. You can't see the great detail and there's a person here has got a dog. So I'm starting with the head, suggestion of the body and legs, 
and the little dog which is following along. Wow, I'm going to put one more person here. Little dot for the head, little shape for the body. And then if you just wipe slightly to the side, you'll get a bit of shadow. It's just giving a sense of distance and proportion and perspective. I think this person needs a friend here. Here, looking a bit lonely. Let's give them a friend to walk with. Maybe it's a younger person, a smaller person walking along. I like that. Okay. We're getting there, aren't we, everybody? Now, you might not want to put the people in. It doesn't matter. Leave them out. Just have it as an empty beach. So what do we need to do to finish? I think we need a few more grasses here. I might pick out some of the edge of the planks of wood. I can either use my pencil again, just to make that a little bit more distinct where we walk down to the beach. Well, I think that's all there is to it. I think that's complete. Let's move the painting out of the way and we will Take the tape off in a moment. Yes. Normally I would leave this to dry for about an hour, even overnight, because overnight the colours blend and soak into the paper even better. But anyway, if, I'm, if I try this very carefully and I peel the tape away, very, very carefully, one side and then the other side. I'm peeling the tape down. Always away from the painting. Don't just rip it off in your eagerness. Let's take this top part off. So you can see the finished result looking quite spectacular. The only thing I need to do now is to sign my work of art. I usually use a pencil, H. Templeton. And it's finished. I hope you enjoyed this uh, latest lesson. It, it is m more difficult than some of the other paintings I've put on and hopefully this kind of uh, lesson will be one that you might think of wanting to do in the future. Happy painting!